Yeah. And then you sit here. And then um, talk. To, I don't think you can eat during this, though. Okay. Are you hungsies? Like, starvesies? No, I just want to have some. Just want to have something. Snacks but, like, if you're going to be crunching, I just don't. I mean, no audio. We'll take a pause. Okay. But now I have someone that can maybe edit things out if you don't want to yeah. add them in. I think it's nice. You know, it's like we're creating the landscape of your podcast. You want to have, like, a. Yeah. You want to have a cozy vibe? Yeah. So your guests the, maybe have a snack and a beverage. Do you feel cozy? Yeah. Do you feel cozy? Yeah, I feel a little still. Okay, um, yeah. Out of breath from the okay. stretching out. Do you, babe? In your office. Take as much time as you need. We're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to shuffle the cards. How about that? Okay. Okay. I've never seen this. Can you guys before. hear us okay or do we need to be closer? Okay, cool. I mean, it always helps to, you know, speak into the mic. Okay. Hi. Oh, shit. I'm supposed to be filming behind the scenes of this. Thank you. Thank you. There she is. And there they are. Will you wave to my camera? <laughs> <laughs> Yay. It's so sweet. Okay, we're going to pull. Okay, so these cards were given to me. I guess we're just going to start, I, you know? Just begin. I and And now we will begin. So I'm not like really like a an oracle card person by the way if you hear clicking that's my dog choopy she's walking around the room and we have wood floors okay um choopy is 11 years old she's a sato we rescued her from puerto rico and she's choop, the love choop. of my life there choopy. she is okay so i did not ever believe in cards like in cards like this um but then i got this as a gift and i pulled the card and i was like holy cannoli this is amazing. Who I believe in it. Eric's sister, Laura, okay. who like really always wants me to pull a card. Yeah. But like, do we shuffle these? No. Do we? Okay, you shuffle. I'd like to shuffle because I'm pull here, them. That's here's my, my thing. thing. Uh -huh. If everything is energy and this is energy, then maybe it is real because it's all energy, everything. I think any, of course. Do you, so if you pull this, you believe that it's meant to be. Well, I think if I think it's meant to be, it is meant to be, right? Yeah, I so guess. of course. Okay. I, do you know I was just going through a period right after COVID where I was pulling a tarot card every morning? Really? Mm -hmm. And I about that. and I asked you if you believed in it right when you walked in. I know. So I was like, you know I feel I... like self conscious. Like, you know, I don't, I don't know. It's easy to judge well, someone for. I mean, the this Oracle is a tough. Unicorns. This is an intense deck. I mean, it's a that's... the unicorns are here to tell you. I mean, it just that's what, how they start some of these sentences. Excuse me. It's okay. okay. I mean, it's a. Wow. <laughs> wow. It's a difficult, I mean, she's, it's an she's intense got one. Style, she's got grace. Okay. She's got taste. She's got waist. But I do like these. I like, oh, it's pretty. I feel like I'm falling into the Northern lights. Okay. Okay. The dog farted. The dog farted? Yes. Choopy? <laughs> she ate fast and then went on a walk. Okay. Wow. What? <laughs> Support. She's naked. Ask for help. On a horse. <gasps> she's straddling a horse. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's calmly straddling horse. Ask for help. Get more rest. Nurture yourself. Um, she's straddling a horse. Can you see it okay? I mean, you could probably zoom in and post, right? I don't know how life works. Support. Um, I feel like I need to pull another one. Let's yeah. read it. Can we read about it first? Yeah. Ask for help, get more rest, nurture yourself. Feeling tired, burnt out, overwhelmed, or overworked is a call to lighten your load and recharge your batteries. Maybe this is for you too. Your energy levels are low. Well, yes. After the week I've had. Yeah. Your energy levels are low and it's proving counterproductive to getting things done or being there for each other, others. You may feel you have to do everything yourself or don't know who to ask for help. A part of you could even be addicted to the adrenaline rush of stress and hustle. You may even feel it as a sign of weakness to slow down or that you don't deserve to be nurtured. You have nothing to prove by working yourself too hard or sacrificing yourself by doing everything alone. I don't think I need to do everything alone. No. I ask for a lot of help. I used you know. to be like that. 
but I've gotten so much better at it. This winged horse urges you to ask for help. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the part that I'm like, okay. Chupi, I think you need to go in the bedroom because you're clicking a lot, right? She's really clicking around, right? I don't think so. Really? It's kind of nice. This winged horse encourages you to ask for help, <laughs> to get more rest and be more loving to your body. Schedule in non-negotiable time for naps. Set boundaries around naps. your work hours and... Do you take naps? I was going to ask you the same thing. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> I really wish I did. I never take, I couldn't even take a nap today. If all the days that I needed a nap, it was today. Set boundaries around your work hours and let, do you, have you ever really done that? Set boundaries around my work hours? Mm -hmm. Never. Yeah. Never. I Maybe like I've told this card for you too. Maybe. But yeah, but too. like. Yeah, I mean, I have some thoughts about this because I think it's also like the work of trying to understand oneself or feel, um, for me, I think like work around feeling better also can needs to be put down sometimes. Yeah. Um, it's I a mean, lot. Also, like who take, like, this I know there's really a lot of people funny. that take naps, like people, it's a normal thing, but like, I can't nap if I no. nap. I feel so groggy. I end up sleeping way too long mm -hmm. and I feel like it makes me tired. So no, I don't yeah. nap. God damn it. Um, and well, you don't. that feels like a bit Wait, of a bust. what did I do with my phone? I wanted to, oh, here we go. Okay. So this podcast. Hi. Hi. We're this, getting cozy. Yeah. How do you feel about that card? Do you feel like that was a, that was a big flop? I felt actually, I felt like I wanted <laughs> Chupi's nesting on the couch. Chupi is not trained. Um, I feel like oh, she's just doing her thing at home. Um, Hi, Chup Chup. <laughs> Can you see her? Can you see Chupi? Mm -hmm. Wow. What a legend. What a legend. Hi, um, little girl. Little girl in my world. I feel like, uh, no, I don't really have boundaries with work. I don't want boundaries with work right now. I'm, I feel like so lit up inside of me. But I did notice that... Um, when you read that, I felt kind of like resistance come up when I was hearing you say that. So yeah. I just don't want to, I don't want to hear someone say, don't work. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But I want to get on like, cause well, this is such an interesting question for you. Like what yeah. work means. Yeah. Don't you think? Well, that's actually something that someone, I think someone asked you and I, I pulled my Instagram followers to ask you questions I can't believe did any I, so I saw, many people asked you. I mean, it was a lot like of who, like, like you inspire three? me. It was like a lot of like just love for you. It's really nice. It's really great. But well, I said like this show is called Expanders, and an expander is someone who shows you what's possible. And for me, you show me. I mean, you were the first person I was like, that's my first guest on my ever podcast. Not only can I like fumble through this first podcast and not and oh, figure it out with you. By the way, you're not fumbling. You are Thank amazing. You. you already feel like you have some sort of a zone that you're in. See, that we're this is why together. you make me feel so secure and safe. Um, you do. Mm -hmm. But I was, but you just like, I just, I'm always asking you how to live my life. I'm mm -hmm. always like, you just have such a great like self-care practice. Mm. you really work at it it's work oh. you journal you read you seek help when you need it boy you do i ever move your body i try you, that's like you i'm like wow it's like you know it seems like it's second nature to you but like just being your friend mm -hmm. and watching you just move through life mm -hmm. and like fighting for your happiness fighting for your health Mm -hmm. You know, it's easy for me, at least I struggle with it. I mean, you know, I've struggled with my body and like movement oh and that God, sort of thing too. for so me long. Mm -hmm. You told me once you're meant to go through this and you'll know, oh, there's Mimi. You'll know why my son is barking. Mimo. Um, thanks, Mimo. Right when I'm getting vulnerable. Good Lordy. Mimi's Mimo. supporting you. Mimi. Um, but for me, when I was in a low moment in my life, I had had a surgery and I was feeling just like separate from my body member. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you were I just do. like, you are meant to go through this time. You're going to be in it for a little while. And then when you come out of it, 
you're going to feel like it, you went through it for a reason. Yes. And so just today, literally, because I've been working out with a trainer, Amanda. I've been moving, um, sort of. She's the PT, but yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I've been seeing a PT. That's amazing yeah. too. She did yeah. laser on my neck. It was amazing. I do highly recommend. I want to try Because my neck is so stiff. Yeah, mine too. I think most people have a stiff neck. Yeah, mine comes up in like very... I can't imagine. Times. Well, yeah. But like you just move your body so much. I mean, you have a movement coach. You mm -hmm. you like it. You prioritize that. And mm -hmm. for me, seeing you, how you live your life is so inspiring. And I just wanted to know... If you can Jessie, share, thank you for saying yeah. that. Yeah, of course. Also, vice versa. Thank you. I mean, we have, you know, I think we have different practices, but very much the same intensity and intention behind that we use to kind of live. What were you going to say? I didn't mean to. No, I received with gratitude. Thank you. Um. <laughs> I do like you, as you like you saying you, that. Receive, receive, receive. Yes, it's a big theme I've noticed in my life is teaching people to receive mm -hmm. lately. It's a whole thing. But anyway, what my question is, is do you have any processes? God bless you. <laughs> You're just adorable. You're the cutest little bear. Um, do I have any? What's like, your question? How do you? What are your daily practices that are non-negotiable to help you stay on track with your health, your well-being, that sort of thing? Okay. Well, you are great at it. Well, I don't know. Okay. First of all, I want to say, what is that thing that people say? Necessity is the mother of invention. Like there is no part of any of the things that you've seen me do for years that is anything other than deeply necessary it's born out of a place of like great need and great discomfort okay and great i would go so far as to say pain in some capacity and that's where i started to do all these things it wasn't like it's not just like good on you tay tay for you know mm -hmm. getting up and stretching yeah it's like if i, I have don't to do this, this i will be in pain. this i will be in the abyss wow you know what i mean yeah okay so it's so like that's a preventative thing, thing. That's well, motivating. I think it's like, I think all of this started as like a, is like a healing thing. You know, I, I got, it's, it's, it started as a like triage. All of this stuff started as triage What's in my mid twenties. Just like, I would say, so the idea of a daily practice. Yeah. I do things like I have trained myself at this point where I like wake up and I pray. I've like very much come out of the closet about God. I like wake up and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I, I can't do this on my own S source, nature, God, love. So this isn't a religious hey. God. This is a no, something grand, no. something bigger it's than like me. It's like the good old, you know, power greater than myself, mm -hmm. a higher power. Yes. So, and I think like there are people in different recovery communities that understand what that's about. But I guess for people who don't know, it's the notion that like you get, maybe get to a place in your life where you're like, I have tried and I have failed and I am in pain and I don't know what to do. Help. It's basically the, my idea of, of, of God or source or whatever is like, kind of like, if I asked for help, help is a, help is a valuable question. Mm -hmm. Help is a question that I will receive an answer to out into like the ether. Like if I ask for help, mm -hmm. I'll receive something. I, I, does there, that I make keep, sense? Yeah, totally. I yeah. keep hearing this mantra of like, show me how it gets better. Show me, show me how to do this. Yeah. Just show me how, it, how good it can get. Like, That's what it is. Yeah. Show me how good it I can get. I love that. Show me how good it can get. And like, sometimes it's been like, show me in neon lights how to make it through the day. Yeah. Like neon lettering, and what my next it, move is. Yes. Does that help? So, yeah. So you'll pray in the beginning and especially like if you're in a low moment and then you'll say, just show me how to get through the day and then something magical happens. No, I think that I also have learned that like that the mat, the, the, God, this all sounds so just like, but the magic, the magic isn't also just taking the next right action. Yeah. You know, the magic isn't like getting out so of bed. What? Like, I don't know, like, I don't usually talk about stuff like this. And I feel like it, it could sound like, like, 
trite or something, but, or like a, or like, um, like canned, but it's, it's really the truth. But to say, to say what you're saying, like, I have found so much to answer your question really on most days I try cause mornings can be hard for me. I struggle mm-hmm. with a trem- I I think from the way I grew up, I like have baked into me some level of depression and anxiety that I have found ways to soothe and treat and be with. And these ways are healthy. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm saying this because, yeah, because so many people, I mean, Lord knows I've had moments like, I mean, we all have sister. We've dabbled in all kinds of things to make me feel better. Like from pills to mac and cheese. I I mean, mean, I've done it all. I mean, mac and cheese is still where I live. I mean, gluten does make me feel like I have an inside turtleneck on. That's what I've learned. What the hell? (laughs) What's What's an inside turtleneck? It makes my lips (laughs) don't Oh, an inside turtleneck. I don't know why I pictured that like on your inside of your. It doesn't make sense. I don't know. But, but now like, I get it. Yeah. So I'll, it's actually. That's what gluten makes you feel like? Yeah. As I've gotten older, I'm 38 now. And like in the past three years, like if I eat too much mac and cheese, say, um, I feel like my throat is swollen. What? Maybe someone on your podcast can help me. With that yeah, more. yeah. Yeah. So I'll have some doctors on. <laughs> You're my, so this is just a trial. This is like to see how a podcast would be. I know. It's like and, a, it's like a pie. I mean, and here you go. Thank you. This is so brave. So the idea of like saying, like, I'm, I'm open to listening. It's not all going to come from my mind, my thinking mind. Yeah. Is all sorts of interesting shit happens, including like, starting a podcast. You know what I mean? I have been just like trying something. Yeah, of course. I mean, I've been wanting to start a podcast forever and there's been so much resistance within me Mm -hmm. of like, it's hard. Like people make it look so easy. I listen to a million. I'm such a podcast listener. I know you are. I'm obsessed with podcasts. You always have, Jess always has the best podcast recommendations. I'll send you some good ones. You have the best ones. I always listen to whatever you send me. Really? And I don't do that with many people. Really? I mean, I have a hard time answering texts. You don't think I do because you think I text like really well. Remember that you were asking me that you're like, you always check in. Yeah. Are you, are you not like that with everyone? No, I'm honored. Yeah. I have a hard time. I have a hard time with that. With really? Some people. Mm-hmm. Very I'm much so. So honored because you're not like that at all. You make me feel so taken care of in our friendship. Oh, like, that and I. That's another thing that I that you've expanded for me is that um, you check in on me, and I feel like I need to be better about that with all my friends. I actually wrote a note in my notes app mm-hmm. of a list of all my friends. Because I just don't what's wanna... going on, Jeff? And I'm You're like, feeling... I'm gonna send. I'm I'm going to send a Happy New Year gift, GIF thing to all these people on New Year's so that I can make sure I check. I just do it. So these are the people I love. And by the way, if you didn't get it, I still love you, and you're my friend. Ooh, here's a good one. Are you busy? No. Don't check your phone right now. You I'm know. sorry. You're in the middle of a fancy interview. Mimo's barking. It's chaos. I get it. I'm thrilled. I want to pull um, another oracle. Do you know, you really? Card. As yeah. we did that, I was like, oh, is this? Well, this is our thing. Um, I think it is. It could be. We could pull a couple different cards. I do like the idea of supporting ourselves more. Keep going. Wait, well, what do it you will mean emerge. by that? From the card. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. From the card. From the card. We'll find some themes here. Keep going. What's your um, question? Okay. So my question is... Um, so I want to ask you a couple. Okay, so okay, here's Where one that I think is really who fun. Who sourced your questions? Did you make these over? No, from the these are from the internet. There's I'm a so bunch of good people ones. People even respond to something like that. Really? People yeah. are obsessed with you. No, they are not. Yes, they are. Receive, receive. They really are. Receive. Thank receive, you. Receive, receive. Okay. They are. I mean, and also you don't have social media anymore. So I got a lot of people asking why. And if you're going to come back, you don't have to answer that. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Life is a movable feast. Maybe someday. Okay. Who knows? Do you want to answer why or not? Up oh, why? I la- oh, I think that for me, social media just fucks with me. I can't do it well. Like it's so, I'm so astounded by the way you do. I mean, you, to me, use social media. It's like an art form. Like you create content, it's deeply creative. It's so funny. It's so good. I get a little bit lost in the sauce of who is doing what 
And I also, and I think it's a part of the, my own neurodivergence, my own ADHD, which I also, have you, there's this book called Scattered Minds by Gabor Mate, that teach the okay. teacher do you know who he is no. <laughs> it's no, really but like, i mean that's a great no, title and i get who it's for <laughs> me for well, maybe anyone maybe anyone but the thing that i learned about with my own uh untreated add is that when i start down the social media path yeah i'm it's like a bug in my brain where i'm excited I, i'm like who liked this who didn't like this yeah. who's posting what I'm not good enough. And that voice of I'm not good enough or I'm not doing it right. I just have no time for it. Yeah. And it I really mean, gets really kicked up there. And I also, I also kind of have decided this thing that I think that it's okay to be that like an actor is separate from a celebrity. I think I'm really mean? bad. I don't know. Like, I think that celebrity might be like a side effect of like being an actor. <laughs> That Just rustling kicking. sound is Taylor kick, kicking, kicking my plant. It. But I'm not particularly good at um, focusing enough in my day to say, I'm going to share this and I'm not going to share this. Like if once that, that door gets opened, there's a lot of energy that's constantly scattered. Yeah. And it's really hard to rein it in for me. You know, I'll get in my car accident. Yeah. I'll hit something because yeah. I'm thinking about stuff. And so I'm, I'm wondering, I'm kind of experimenting with what does that look like? Because yeah, it doesn't I, mean that I'm not interested in people and I don't want to engage and I deeply want to feel connected like everyone else. And I also want to do the right thing by my career, you know, mm -hmm. but I'm like, well, is it maybe my quality of life is worth like not getting a job or not finding out about something or whatever, you know, I think there's a point to growth or more not being the end game. More isn't, isn't the point. And so I was only on social media for this like vague idea of more-ness. And mm -hmm. I was like, maybe more isn't the point. But like, what do you, you're going so deep and like, all I'm thinking about is what do you do with your time if you're not on social media <laughs> i spend so much time i mean I'm a, i love it yeah and don't love it yeah but also like i don't have do? i mean it's for all of my what practices. do you look at you but just you text talking. people i text people i call you them. read a lot too no i don't i get distracted do by like, reading i like spend time with libby i like walk my dog with who libby my well, girl that was another <laughs> question do you want to talk about the, that sure I mean, I spend, I think about that. I spend time, I go to therapy. I work on my, I work on work. I like prepare for roles. Yeah. I try to work on the vertebra in the middle of my back that feels stuck. And I that try to get them to undulate. You can only do that for what, 10 minutes? Yeah. I, I mean, mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't do that. But my time is then spent trying to, you know, I guess deal with some, deal, be in life. Yeah. I mean, it's not, yeah. it's not easy. I mean, I mean, it's like, I mean, the reality, you want to know the reality of it? Yes. Like I spend time trying to practice presence often. Sorry, I wasn't listening. Just kidding. <laughs> and that's a joke. Um, I mean, no, I totally, don't know that, like, totally. No, that's beautiful. And like also negotiating with the question internally of like, why would I want, why do I need people to see me a certain way? Yeah. Well, I'm also talking about not just posting, but ingesting social media. Like yeah. I'll spend a long time on TikTok because I want to see a cat playing a piano, you know, like it's very entertaining. I mean, I do too. Yeah. I oh, do too. If I send you stuff, you love it. Yeah. I mean, it's like, and it's like, I'm like your aunt from Idaho. Oh, it's so exciting. <laughs> I'm so excited. Like yes. it's never happened. It's and it's crazy. normal. It's I normal. could see You're... it all the time. It's not, I don't think, I don't, I mean, I, I don't know if it's like the way that I'm doing it, but I, I do, I certainly feel like I'm inside of myself. Like I'm closer mm -hmm. to my own particular soul's imprint on the planet. Damn. Who can say that? I That's mean, amazing. I don't feel like I'm there, but I feel like it helps me stay closer to like, okay, I'm Taylor. I'm not anybody else. It's going to be do. It's going to be done my way. 
I mean, me with me. Yeah. And it, yeah, I mean, that's cool. Yeah, I think it is. That's cool. really cool. All right. Well, you said Libby. Do you want to talk about her? My girlfriend? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not really. She's such but... a nice, cute little bear. Yeah. She's an, she's an angel. I mean, that's just was one of the questions. Who, who, who is Libby? Not who, but is Taylor dating anyone? Yes. I'm in a, I'm in a relationship. Yeah. With, with a, Libby. With Libby. Okay. Well, then that's the answer. I mean, is that, is there more you want me to talk about? I, I don't, like I want you to want to talk about whatever you want to talk about. So if you want to talk about Libby, we can. Well, it's we your can... podcast, Jess Rona. What do you no, want? No, I want you to to talk about anything you want to talk about. I know people would be curious about your relationship, but we can also talk about, there's other questions in I here. I don't really know what we would, like, what is there to talk about? Like, we both is really Libby like on coffee. social media? Libby drinks a lot more coffee than I do. If I drank the amount of coffee that Libby drank, I would be like. You'd float out of here? I You'd mean, I'd spaz. probably like. You'd need yeah. that scattered brain book a little bit more. You need a couple copies of it. Yeah. I <laughs> Dude, scattered Where'd minds. my scattered brain book go? Oh, scattered minds. Where my scattered minds? How do people find that book? They probably lose it. That's a that's know. a flaw in the system. You'd have to buy a couple copies. I wonder if you purchase one and it comes with four. <laughs> that might be better. I'll email the, the author. Um, Libby's reading it too. Oh, I have a question. She's not on social media. Um, yeah, just Rona. Tell me about the day. This is something that <laughs> did you write this question? I I I yeah. love it. Okay. I love it. Go go go. Because like I've never asked you this. Yeah. Um, tell me about the day that you knew you were famous. What? Yeah. That I knew I was famous. Yeah. I mean, I still don't. Feel, I mean, okay. If I understand. Okay. Well, is there a day? Because okay, can I tell this? I have two. I have two ideas. Yes, okay, because I was gonna say I should tell the story about the Tegan and Sarah concert because <laughs> yes, I didn't know you were famous. I nightmare. didn't know how famous you were. Well, to the lesbians. Okay, so of you're a lesbian. Age. You're a le you're lesbian. The lesbian. The lesbian of queen age. of the lesbians. Well, I don't know if that's true, but of a certain age. I mean, you're the. I mean, literally. Well, let's say orange is the new black was iconic. Men, women of all sexual orientations would love to be in love with you <gasps> i think anyone would <laughs> oh really that's such a crazy that's no, a sweet thing really? to say oh my god you're so like easy to be obsessed with wow so i didn't know any of this when i first we first started hanging out and um <laughs> i mean this is just such a funny story because like it shows how naive i was it's such a funny story like i threw you to the lion's den so we were hanging out in brooklyn this was years ago this was like five six years ago maybe I think it was six years ago now we um went to see tegan and sarah mm -hmm. in brooklyn well we went i really wanted i really oh, liked yeah. you you were really good we i really wanted to be your friend i told you that when i met you i said i believe be you friends. and i was like okay it's on we're gonna be friends and then you were like, will you, my friend, <laughs> my friend, Sarah, I think he's said my friend. I think it was like, your friends are in this concert. And I was like, Sh uh, sure. And then you were like, it's a Tegan and Sarah concert. And I said, I don't know if I should go to that. Like, is there like a special place for us to sit or something? I had no, I was and like, you yeah, said, I think, no. I think but we I, got comp tickets. Yeah. So and you were late and you met me there and I had already sat down and you were, you texted me and you said, I think I need a buddy. And I got out to the lobby and it was like you were ordering a drink and the person who was serving you the drink was like oh, starstruck. And like people were looking at you and you were just like in the middle of, of a crowd. Glancing. It was a lot of, yeah. And a lot of like co people constellating their bodies. And I didn't tell Tegan I was, I didn't tell Tegan or Sarah I was bringing you. Mm -hmm. And later Tegan's like, why didn't you tell us? We would have gotten you like a, a special seat. <laughs> and I just feel like I was just naive the way I handled it. And it was just, it's funny. It's a funny story. Do you oh, think Tiggy would be I was okay if I'm telling that story? Of course she would be. Tiggy's the you best. Shout her. out to Tiggy. I'm going to have Tiggy as a guest. Yeah. She would be like, an amazing guest. Yeah. She's far oh more She'd erudite than I. She has a lot of interesting things to erudite? say. Erudite? <laughs> erudite. It's you a word. in the scattered mind? Yes. <laughs> they should come with four copies. What's erudite? It means like well-spoken. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was a funny story. That was a weird moment in time. I was also wearing a red buffalo plaid shirt. Oh, Lord. And I think you had a beanie on. Yeah. I Even really worse. had it. I had you were a just, it was look. a magnet. 
I know. What were the what... two things you were going to say before I told you that story about like the famous well, thing? Well, I remember once my brother, whom I love very much and is like a real, I wish he, I constantly, you know, like I'm angling for his affection. And there was one day after I did, <laughs> I did this job called Mercy. Do you know that I was in a show called Mercy? No. Right after I dropped out of graduate school. I got, I got this to nanny. I didn't drop out because I had a job, but I left this graduate program. Oh, I knew that. Yeah. Um, and I was nannying and I got, and I got this job. I got this pilot and then it went to, um, series, you know, and I thought I was going to do that. And just, it was going to be like what I did between being in the theater, you know, right. I did so this you production of Uncle theater, Vanya. And I, then yeah. also do some tv and movie stuff i like wanted the... to make movies yeah okay i was like i'll make movies and but i did this pro uh, this production of uncle vanya that summer and then um while we were doing it this show got picked up and went to series and i did it for like 10 months 22 episodes or something and then every once in a while i was 24 at that point like people would kind of recognize me and i was I went home for Christmas and my, I was like at Walmart or target with my brother and somebody came up to me and said, are you that girl from, you know, mercy? And I said, I said, no, you I did? Said, yeah, I said, no, because I was so and overwhelmed. Here is, ladies and gentlemen, we have that girl here. It was a Walmart. Come on out, Sarah. Just kidding. I don't have her. So that, sorry, would that would so be so upsetting. I, still, I would apologize to her so deeply. And my brother. So you lied? Well, I fully lied and turned around. I said, no. And I turned around. Why? Because you were embarrassed? Yeah. I just felt like, I it's... felt like I didn't, I felt like I was like, no, like that's not my real work. That's not, yeah. I want to be known for something else you don't know me i i have this whole idea and my brother was like you know who suffers no fools and was just like you know you could have made that woman's day what did you do what was that so he shamed you he shamed me hard <laughs> that's like and then he was very so shamey me. yeah well and he was also like 20 at the time okay that's fair an annoying Bastard. little yeah truly i mean now that think about that i was clearly i just needed some support no, but you know i think i understand because there's a weird play in status when someone recognizes you as if you have a high status in some way and then I have a low status because you're this person. I, I wonder if it's like, or you were also like, no, that's this other thing I do. It's not the real actress that I am. It wasn't that. It was more like I felt so socially awkward and unsure of myself, like a capital S self. Like, this is me. I'm valuable no matter what. And I'm planted in myself and I'm okay. I had not even a taste of that. No. And I was so uncomfortable with humans that mm. I was just like, no. <laughs> and I <ran> away. Oh. <laughs> and my brother. That's so sweet though. I was you really just were a little overwhelmed. I was really so overwhelmed. overwhelmed. I hadn't read Scattered Minds yet. No. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> and that's the sponsor of our podcast. I want to meet him. Gabor Mate? Mate? Gabor, I believe, is a Hungarian name. I am half Hungarian. And my really? uncle's name was Gabor. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um but that was, but I wasn't That's, famous then. The really time I realized that like just people, like things were different was the weekend after Orange is the New Black came out. Oh, when man. that first season launched and we were like, are we, I, I still, do you know that was like 10 years ago? It's like, are we were making Crazy. a web series? I didn't, because there was no precedent set for like everything streaming at once. No one, there was nothing. Who knew that show would be just massive? And, and the way people consumed it was so odd because we like at the end of, I remember I was out to dinner that weekend that it came out the Saturday. It came out. It wasn't even the full weekend. And you were over. in New York? Mm hmm And I'd never, you know, because I'd made a few movies and been working and doing things since that Mercy television show, but, mm -hmm. and done some plays and stuff, but, um, you know, just been working and working on myself. I'd really gotten, you know, I'd started to deal with some of my addictions and stuff like that, but really it was under under the radar and then we left dinner and it and people out the door were recognizing I, th I think it was with Samira Wiley actually from that from the show and people were like <gasps> and um yeah were you was... feeling like the same awkward like yeah I mean it wasn't as bad I had a few more years on myself mm -hmm. but it was still weird yeah it wasn't as like painful is that first thing 
Yeah. No, you weren't ready. I didn't know what Poor to do. Little baby. I tried my best. Wow. Um, okay, so here's a question that I have um, that I think is really cool is how did you become friends with Jane Fonda? I thought that was a great question. Oh my God, that's a great, guys, yeah. that's a great question. Like she's a legend. She's amazing. What yeah. did you like? Like she's incredible. Do you know, she wrote me a note. I, I learned so much from her. I did. Uh, I just said happy, you know, she turned 85 Holy canal. and her, one of the organizations she started that I don't even remember my scattered mind. Google There's Jane Fonda. Something in Georgia, Georgia. It's like Georgia. G W G and I mean, it's like a Georgia. It's like for adolescents in Georgia. Mm -hmm. And they asked me to do a little, to say happy birthday to her for in a montage that they made for Jane. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And I said, happy birthday. And I said a few things about loving her so much and, and wanting her to feel a little bit of everything that she's putting out in the world. And I hope that it comes back to her and she can feel her, yeah. her, her, what she, some of what she puts out. And she wrote me a note saying, thank you. Really? Mm -hmm. I wonder if she did that for everyone. It was a montage of a bunch of actors and people. I think, it, I don't know how many it was. I don't, I don't, I don't know how That's pretty many cool. it was, but she really like talked about what I said and said, thank you. And it just, it's such a beautiful distillation of like the integrity there, you know? Yeah. Like that, the amount of presence that she has to give everywhere. And the way that we be, I was at like the zenith of that orange is the new black stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just read her book on some trip, a book, one of her autobiographies. Mm -hmm. she has, I think she's written like three. I know. I was going to say, like, I feel like she has she's written like books. seven books, but I read one of them and she talked about her bulimia and she talked about her really difficult relationship with her mother. And she talked about, um, yeah, her, her just difficult stuff. And someone introduced me to her. The woman, she had just, I think they just signed up to do Grace and Frankie, Frankie mm -hmm. and Grace mm -hmm. on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And so the woman who ran Netflix at the time, incredible, incredible woman. And she introduced me to Jane and I was just able to say like, it was it's wild. I had just read her book. Yeah. And I was like, I thank you. I am in... I'm in recovery from my own bulimia and my own anorexia. And I like, I, my mother is also mentally ill and my, you know, I'm, and, and we talked at like some Oscar party or something for Mimi wasn't there. And he's still he's mad upset. about it. He's, he's really still upset that he wasn't like there. like he was jilted. Yeah. So, but like next time, but I can't promise it because Jane no, don't is promise. busy. He's a big head drinker. She anyway. is, <laughs> she's busy. So we, and then we kept in touch. Like, well, so how cool. does that happen? I mean, I don't know. I don't know how that happens. And I, I am, I'm. And so, um, I, I consider her one of the, like something in my life that makes me understand that life is benevolent and I can trust life and that life is full of surprises really beyond my wildest dreams. Wow. Like she is, she, I think about her, I have the note she like, I, and it's like, okay, life is really, life has got my back. I, that is crazy because I struggle so much with trusting life. Yes. Trusting that things are going to be okay. Yes. Releasing control. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this answers another question of who is your expander? And I feel like she's one of your expanders. She definitely she's someone is someone that shows you what's possible. I mean, my God. Yeah. What a a woman, what a life. Yes. But like for someone to teach you that, um, that you can trust life. Yeah. Cause sometimes you're just like, why are things happening? What is going on? I mean, all the time. Yeah. Like every, every so to day. be able to trust that, oh, everything happens for a reason. I, I'm, I know this is going to be okay. Mm-hmm is like so major. And I think it's key to survival to being yes. happy a little bit. I think it, or I, a lot. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I mean, for, for me, I think it's maybe one of the, it's like, it's like the thing, the more, the more you trust and are you're really good about the more the comfortable with the com like, I, 
probably 10 years ago, decided that I wasn't going to be able to figure it out and that becoming comfortable with uncertainty, the amount, you know, was, was paramount. It's like the yeah. whole point. Well, that's, you wake up and pray. Yeah. Cause do I don't you? know. I, yeah, I wake up and pray. I yeah. do. I really do. Well, we never talked about your other things that you do every day to, in your routine. Well, I've gotten better at that. You know, I'm like a sober person. So I have help. Like I have, I like pray. Sometimes I meditate, but now I realize like meditation for me takes different, can be different things that when I'm practicing is presence mm-hmm. and not, I have like a very vicious thought life that can I know. really, yeah, yeah, you know. Well, I think it's really common. I do feel like it can get so dark because our shadow selves know us so well. Yeah. That they can take us out in a second. Absolutely. And some are just really vicious and really dark. Yeah. But I remember talking to you about that a long time ago and like, we were talking about naming it and like separating yes. yourself from it. Yeah. That was a great conversation. I remember I pulled over. I was on Beechwood Canyon, like on the phone with you. And I was like, this is not you. Yeah. This is a, a voice that is separate from I you. I remember that, that conversation yeah. too. I was on Washington Street in Brooklyn. I mean, really? that was a tough time. Do you remember yeah. that? That was around when I'd broken my ankle and it was like, oh, you really had like, pain. you were in it's a, like a f- moment. And that relationship, there were a few years there that mm-hmm. were dark, mm-hmm. really dark. I think for me, Which also like is is a is a little bit at odds with the notion of making goals and figuring stuff out and having, which I'm not opposed to. But for me, where I am now, this idea of saying, my job is to listen to life, versus impose my will on it. Like life will talk to me if I'm listening. Ugh. Which is like, that is but like you know what it means? So hard for me. It but means that like I know dying. It's... It means like dying every day. It's like I'm dying to the idea. Even before this job that just happened, the new thing came through. I was like, I'm even dying to the idea. What if this thing that the show comes out is terrible? I'm like dying to the idea of what it means even to be an actor, or how I make money, or what my relationship looks like, or having a child, or it's like every day saying I'm kind of letting go of my want for these things and seeing what is presented to me that instead. is why because i know this about you mm-hmm. that is why i wanted to talk to you here mm-hmm. because that is it seems impossible to me yeah and i know you've been like working on it it's a practice it's a daily yeah. thing you have so much support but like this is your this is your livelihood that's on the line mm-hmm this is your money, your career, your f- everything. And you're like, I surrender. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that. I mean, I guess it's a, it's like a muscle that needs to be strengthened. Like yeah. it's just something that you have to work on if you want it. Yeah. It's so foreign to me. And I think in our culture, it's, it's so very foreign. Well, foreign. because we live in like an individualistic, nationalistic, capitalistic, yeah. white supremacist, patriarchal place where it's like me. Mm-hmm. I'm in charge. It's me. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps type of deal. Yeah. And not even to get in, you know, to all of that. Cause I'm not, I don't, I'm not smart enough to tie all that stuff in, but I do just to speak to your point that it is the way we're socialized as well. Like we are in charge, manifest your own destiny and make it happen. Be the captain is of your own ship. Is there a little bit of that? Like you... I feel like it's not just like, let me just, who who knows what's going to happen? Like, you're not yeah. passive about it. No, you're I actively mean, I releasing. Yeah. But I you mean, still want things. Yes. Very so, much so. I very much want things. But I think, I don't even know what the, what the answer is. But I do know that, like, when you were like, like, I don't, in this weird, wild way, like, I don't even think it is my money. And I don't even think it is my job. And I don't even think it is my relationship. I do think that it's like, source that moves through me and if it belongs it doesn't necessarily belong to me it's like if that's where god it's still so weird to say the word god out I loud think you're just worried that people are judging yeah or that people think it's religious yeah but and it's not, it's a not religious, religious god. and if people want to take 
God in a different way or judge, that's because they have their own thing with God. That's really true. I think whoever listens to this podcast is going to receive whatever you're, the point that you're making. Yes. Right. Okay. God, so we're talking I, about like I, I a higher it. power. Like, I have a weird thing with God too. Yeah. It's it new to me. I'm worried I about what other people are going to think. I understand. But like there's, I am, the intention for this podcast is putting love and joy and inspiration and a little funny so into the world. Beautiful. And I just feel like whoever is listening, I'm attracting that yes. into this audience. The energy of the podcast so is going to be so good. Jess. So no one's yeah. going to judge you. They're I all really going to love it. They're going to love you. It's so beautiful. Well, that's that's what you just said is so beautiful. And I'm so glad you're doing this. Really? Good for you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, because like it is this, it's yeah. I mean, I don't have any answers, but I know what you works do. for me. Okay, I just yeah. know what works right. for me. And like my, and like, for example, Jane, I think Jane found ways, Jane <laughs> found ways that like, we she, call her Jane. <laughs> she like has found a lot of her healing. What works for her is a lot of activism and doing other people and being involved in big groups. And I'm just, I've found ways that work for me to he, to heal and live in the world with my specific trauma and my specific gifts and how, how to move through the world as, as me. And I really, what works for me is that my career isn't like mine. It belongs to a God of my understanding and my relationships too, and, and, and my money too. So I don't, there's nothing for me to hold on to because it's moving, you know, it's moving through me. Can I ask you, hey, um, ho. <laughs> <laughs> did you just call me a hoe? Oh yeah. Hey ho. Hey ho. Hey ho. Okay. No chips and, tips um, and money. Have I none? It's a song. Do it. Sing it. Uh uh-uh. No. Schnuggly. No. I know the words. Yeah. Um, all, by the way, if you ever want to sing a song and you don't know the words, you just have to meow it. I've learned meow. that from you. Yeah. Any song. Meow, 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 It is so hard. So hard. It's It's so so hard. hard. No matter what level you're at, I've learned being your friend, being friends of actors that are just starting out doing commercials. Like, it is the same. Yeah. You all go through this rejection and you come close to things and you want things. So, like, I just did to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. To protect yourself, you can say, This doesn't belong to me. Sure. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's a part of what it is. I mean, I'm sure it is. I mean, I don't know how you could, unless, I guess, and there are many people who are great at this who decide to produce and write and create and be in charge of their own thing, direct their own things. Do <laughs> my friend Ronani Roro, but I have that's the route I'm deciding. That's to the route you're taking, and that I mean, God bless my scattered mind, but that's not in my wheelhouse. That's not my skill set. So I think that I'm sure a part of what works for me is out of self preser You know, I don't even want to say self preservation because I think like. I'm kind of like not into the idea of self. Preserving or oh, self. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think there's like a capital S self, like a soul that mm-hmm. I'm interested in. But this like, like, I guess I'm thinking more of a persona or a personality. Like there's nothing to hold on to because that's not real. So I,
way of approaching life is for a survival, an element of survival, because your job is so hard and life can be hard. And it just seems like an easier way to live, but maybe just really, it seems so simple, but so hard. Absolutely. Simple I mean, and it. hard. Yeah. yeah. Simple and hard. That's exactly what it is. It's simple and it's not easy. And absolutely. I think everything I do is from a place of like survival and trying to make sense of it. Of yeah. course. Yeah. That all of these have sprung from me trying to make sense of my own individual life. Who are your biggest expanders besides Jane? Anyone else you'd want to name? You are one of them. Thank you. Truly. So is Eric his energy. I mean, you really, really, really are. You're, you're, I mean, it's like, it's really good complimentary because we're in the same soil, you know, and going in different directions. Um, I, I, I can't even, there are so many, there's anything. Yeah. Or like, I'm reading this book right now by this guy named Eric Fromm and it's called the art of loving. Mm -hmm. And it's from like, I think 1956 and he's a psychoanalyst and he's talking about love as an art form. And as, as really it talks about caring for kind of like we have to care for ourselves to be able to care for another person, but he's expanding my brain. Hell yeah. My therapist, you know, I mean, I think it's why I'm so obsessed with acting and actors because I can't even count all of them, but one of a large expander in my life is when I see someone really telling a story with their body and not like a a performance. Mm -hmm. And I feel more grounded in my own humanness and more capable of showing up to life. And that is really expansive for me. Mm, That's beautiful. (laughs) Yeah. Do you think you'll ever write a book like a memoir or something about your life. Do you remember that day I was here a couple of weeks ago and flipping out about how I should be writing more? Do you remember that after Big Bud? I remember it. We went to buy those jumpsuits and then we were, I was so worried that I should be writing more. I didn't know you were talking about a book. I wasn't. I wasn't. But I think, I um, think you should, I think you should write a book. Well, I, I, I mean, think someday I will. Soon. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, think someday. someday. I, would, I think I will too, like when I'm, you know, in 10 years or something. Like, yeah, I think I could write a book when I'm in my 50s. I would someday like to talk about, I had a pretty uh, extreme childhood and I would like to at some point let it be, yeah. you know, like to share for myself, like piece the puzzles together. Mm-hmm. Outside but you help of- a lot of people. If you wrote that, because um, you can't look at your, you know, you yeah. came out so healed yeah, or in the process of healing. Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. I would, I, I would, would, I, I think like, you should. I like that idea. I mean, I, re- I really, I really, really would. I feel like, I mean, I have taken these, did I tell you I was taking these memoir writing classes? Yeah. Yeah. Back in the day. Back in the day, like a couple, yeah, a couple of years ago. And a lot of what this woman was talking about, which I think she took from her own teachers is like, you write from a scar not a wound or something like you write Mm, from like once there's healing rather than like a bloody a bloody stump a bloody Mm -hmm. stump you don't Mm -hmm. write you can't write write because you don't have a hand yeah no hand no it's just wait till you get the prosthetic um, yeah yeah so i don't i there are places that i'm like i'm not sure it's like half we can't follow through with that but it's not fully yeah. I can't fully pick up the writing instrument yet. I bet you could. I know, but I just don't want to. I hate it. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> I hate it so much. On that note, um, is there anything that you'd want to say to to at the end of our po- the first very first Expanders podcast? We're finishing I'm just up. We killed it. So honored to be here with you, and you doing this is expansive to me. Well, thank and you, and everyone who listens. This is this is you. You know writing a book it's just doing the thing it's beautiful thanks friend it's amazing well thank you so much for being here oh my god it was worth the hour and 20 minute drive oh yeah yeah it was though i know well thank you i got some really good phone calls done okay good well you're also going to get a free dinner out of it a yes. free meal of your choice cuts i want a buiga oh delicious <laughs> okay well thank you we love you and goodbye bye